What should I write? How should I start? I don't even understand my topic. Tell me, how should I do it? Oh God, this is huge. Although I have the idea, if these are the thoughts that you have each time you want to write an academic writing or a piece of writing, then this video is for you. Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Bridget. On this channel, I teach sounds, grammar, compositions like this and all the problematic topics in English. If you want to learn more about most of these aspects of English, subscribe, like, share and leave your comment in the comment section below. Remember, your likes will push this video. Let's dive into today's work. So we're looking at seven steps. Should I just say seven steps? Because they have embedded points that you should look at. So get your pen and your jotter or your notebook and pen this down. Cause your writing, your project, your academic writing is gonna be a bomb and a huge success. So stay tuned. What academic writing has to do with accountability. Remember any work that you quote that is not well cited or that is not cited is regarded as plagiarism. Plagiarism means when you quote someone else's works in a if is your work that is academic theft. Plagiarism is academic theft. Let's start our academic writing. The first thing you should do is to believe in yourself. Don't think that you can't write anything. You don't have to be perfect. Don't, no man is an island. That is what I tell most of my students. Put down your thoughts. So whatever you think, you put it down and believe in yourself. Believe that whatever you write is right. But don't be egocentric. Don't be too um, self-opinionated. And know that whatever you're going to write, someone is there to guide you. Each time you're being corrected, reflect the corrections. Aside from believing in yourself, the first thing you should do is to map out a plan. What do you do when you map out a plan? First, you have your topic. You have your topic. Understand your topic. Meet with your supervisor. Let your supervisor guide you. Know what you're expected to do. Know the style of writing. Know how many pages you're expected to write. Know all of those things and get a calendar. Map out the plan for each day or any other day. It depends on your time and your schedule. So you map out your time and make sure you, you follow suits. Do not procrastinate. Remember, academic writing is of the school. Academic writing could be an a project in form of project or in form of thesis or in form of um, a publication in a journal. So the aim, excuse me, academic writing is meant to have value, is meant to be detailed, is meant to be theoretical. You have to choose a theoretical framework that suits your topic. If you're in the art, you choose a theoretical framework from the arts. If you're in the social sciences or management sciences or sciences or in medicals, you have to choose a theoretical framework that will guide your work. You can uh, give us a theoretical framework. Of course you can do that. Remember, believe in yourself. Number two, brainstorm. You know what it means to brainstorm? Brainstorming means generating ideas. That is, you have to start thinking. While you're brainstorming, you are asking yourself questions such as, what do I have to write? What are my aims? What, what are my hypotheses? What are my objectives? Aims and objective are the same. So you have to streamline your thoughts and then feel free to jot them down. If possible, look into the mirror 
freestyle and ask yourself related questions to your research topic and start answering them. While you're doing this, you could as well grab your pen. Another alternative is this. While you grab your pen and the book, pull out the major points and ideas, and then you flesh in them up. That is, you add more ideas to them during this. So while you're doing this, you don't have to think of your spellings. I'm not saying you shouldn't spell words correctly, but don't be too conscious about your spellings or whatever. So all you have to do is to just put them down. Jot them down first. Number three, what do you do next? You research. At this point, you know the first stage is for you to understand your topic. Now, when you understand your topic, of course, as an adult, you already have a background to what you're looking for. It's not new to you, is it? No. So the next thing is for you to brainstorm. What do you have to say by yourself? Because your opinion matters a lot. It is your opinion that is the crux of that research. As a crux of the assignment, that point you bring it to bear is an additional knowledge to someone else who is going to read your write-up. So we're moving on to the next one, which is research. At this point, we have what we call literature review, where you have to read works related to your topic. If all you have to do is to bring out the perspective in which your particular topic has been discussed, then look at that their theoretical framework see if it suits your work you could as well meet your supervisor or your teacher or your guidance to give you a theoretical framework in all of this you should bring your research your supervisor or your prof your supervisor into the picture so that you don't write out of place remember your supervisor knows what he wants you to write is he or she is the one guiding you. So do not leave them out of your research so that you don't end up going back to start all over again. That could be very frustrating. So back to what we're saying, make sure that you're focused. Do not go outside your topic. It could be tempting during research to see all the interesting piece and read them up. Please be conscious of that. You don't have to write voluminous work. All you need to write, you have to write concisely. That is, your point must be valid. Your point must be straight to the point. Your point must be related to your work. After researching your work, we move on to point number four, which is outline. Now, every research work or academic writing has its guidelines. If you're writing a project, it has its guidelines from the front page to the end. If you're writing an article in a journal, it has its outline. So if you're writing to a newspaper, it has its outline. So you have to know the outline you're supposed to write, you're supposed to use. At this point, you have to break down the components of each paragraph. If you're writing an academic writing, you have your introduction. Your introduction has its abstracts, its, its th uh, thesis statement in it. That thesis statement is that idea that you put your point, you build your point in your introduction. We have the introduction, we have the body, and we have the conclusion. Now in the introduction, you have your, your abstracts is to guide us on what you're trying to write. The topic, introduce us to your topic and give us your, your thesis statement. Now let's look, take a look at this topic. Now I got this topic from a library, uh, from a project. It reads, a critical appraisal of lurid imagery and the objectification of women in Nigerian hip hop. Now this is the, the topic. Now let's look at the thesis statement. Now the thesis statement is in the abstract or it could be in your introduction. It depends on the kind of write-ups that you are writing. But remember, in any piece of writing, you should have your thesis statement. That thesis statement is that idea, your point that you're going to, you're going to develop in paragraphs. 
So let's look at this. And this researcher was able to develop most of these points in different paragraphs, or in different chapters, using a theoretical framework. A theoretical framework that is related to music because it's looking at hip hop in music. So let's dive in to the next point, which is drafts. So at this point of drafting, which takes us to point number five, at this point of drafting, you already have a, a sketch of everything you want to write in different blocks. So just put them into writing. You could as well, as well use your Microsoft Word or you put them into a sheet of paper before you type them. So moving on to the next part, which is revise. If you look out for clarity of ideas, check if there's cohesion and coherence in your writer. Now the next thing you look at is your organization. Remember you've actually made some, you've consulted some other, um, some other researchers in your topic. So learn how to cite them. If you're using, it depends on the citation method you're using or the, the style sheet that you're using. You could use a MLA, APA, that's APA style sheet, MLA. So when you're using any of these, you should know how to do in citations. That is according to Bridget 2022. At the end of the, then you open a quotation mark open uh, your a quotation mark you put that in quotation mark then you put in parentheses the page number at the end of your write-up you will either have your your reference bibliography or your work cited here you bring together all the works that you've actually consulted for this research it depends on the style you're using so at this point you have to check your consistency in your style of writing in your organization in your paragraphing and your chapterization according to your chapters according to your paragraphs check if you're using your transition words correctly this is an academic writing so you have to be careful Remember, at this point, you should also look at your punctuation marks. Here, you look at how well you've used your punctuation marks. So look at that, look at your spellings. There's a link below where I attached the video on how to spell words correctly in English. After watching this, please click on that video to learn more on how to spell words correctly and the challenges of spelling words correctly in English in English so moving on to the last point which is proofread this is also a way of saying editing another word for editing now at this point you need someone else to look at your work your supervisor your colleagues they could look at your work you could as well give it to an editor we have some persons who who are specialized in this. They read your work and point out some errors, some ways with which you have to improve and so on. So you have to edit your work. Now remember it is academic. Remember it is academic. So you, you have to avoid abbreviations, slangs, and informal tones. So when you're done with that, I think you're good to go. And, while you are avoiding this, remember that when you're writing an academic writing, you tend to use transitional words and some other thing. Please note not to overuse a particular word. And don't be tautological. Do not overuse it. An example of tautolog tautological words are words that mean the same thing, but you use them together. I did, I did a video on tautological expressions. Please click on the description box below. You will see click on the description box below for you to watch my video on tautological expressions. So instead of using a particular word, look out for a synonym for that word. Your dictionary should be your friend. We've come to the end of today's lesson. If you have other ideas, please put that down in the comment section below. If you have learned something, remember to give this video a like. Remember to subscribe. 
share, and leave your comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. <laughs>